Worst marathon ever. God, that guy's still mowing his lawn. Well, let's talk about where we are and stuff. Okay. Hi, everybody. Welcome to the Dune Steve Audio Fiction Magazine. Uh, this is That Gets My Goat's Worst Marathon Ever. 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 How, how many episodes did we decide we were going to do? Uh, until we run out. We're just going to go until we're done. Well, speaking of done, the guy mowing his lawn in the middle of the night just <laughs> stopped. <laughs> That's so weird. He stopped once before, though, and then he started back up. I think that was when he put on his night vision goggles. How can you do that? I I don't know. Why would you do that? I, I mean, unless he works such a terrible schedule. Yeah, that... maybe he only works day. He works all daylight hours, and so he got home as the sun set. And he's like, "I gotta get that mow- lawn mowed. Look at that thing. It's great. How like do you crazy. look at that thing if it's in the, if he's gone <laughs> I can all day? S- I can see the shadow of it against the wall against the fence. I really gotta get that mowed. <laughs> I don't know. Yeah, it's funny because uh, we are sitting. Right now, in the new home of the Dean Steve Audio Fiction Magazine, we are in the study in which we will be recording all of our episodes from here on out. The this, new home of the big Anklevich family. Is that's right. right. Yes, it's the new home of the Anklevich family. We are not actually moved in yet, unfortunately. <laughs> We had our final walkthrough where we came in and we looked at anything that was broken or any problems that the house might have. We pointed them out so that they can fix them. There's a loud... Oh, it's a helicopter. There's a loud helicopter going over now. They had to investigate the guy with night yeah. goggles. So, yeah, we, we've kind of done a quick walkthrough and uh, the house is basically ready to occupy... I think they haven't they haven't put in our, our front yard yet, but I think they want us to live here before that, so that they make sure that it gets watered and they don't just put it in and then it dies. Oh, okay. It's basically ready to occupy. Um, unfortunately, financing is take is slower than it used to be back in the days before you know when, when they gave loans out to any old guy who walked in off the street. After all those people defaulted on us and, and put us into a uh, five year recession. I think they've tightened up the uh, the risk. The purse yeah, so it's it takes longer to get the money out of them apparently. So we yeah we're we're kind of uh, dangling right now. We actually have to move out of the apartment that we're in next uh, on Wednesday, which is two days from now, and uh, the house will not be available to us at that time. So we're going to be living. Spending the night at uh, family's house and things like that. Then we're going up to Canada for a vacation. So we'll have a free place to live for a, a week. And we're hoping that by the time we get back, we will be able to move in. And I think the guy that's the uh, the real estate agent for the builder was saying that even if it hasn't gone through, he'd let us start moving stuff in at that point. I don't know if we, he'd let us occupy it. Well, it's too bad he won't let you move stuff in right now, so you don't have to move it to your sister's or wherever you're taking it. Yeah, right now we're sticking it in my dad's garage. What we have, I mean, we don't have very much at the apartment because it was furnished for us already, so we just have very few things there, which is nice. Because, A, it's a third-floor freaking apartment, and we would have had to carry it all up the stairs. And let me tell you, just going up the stairs without anything in my hands is a, it's a surprising amount of work to climb stairs. I, I find myself tired out. And I ran a 13 and a half mile, you know, half marathon, but walking up three flights of stairs <laughs> wears me out. So I don't know what's up with that. But yeah, it's a good thing that, that we didn't have to move all that stuff up the stairs. But yeah, now we're moving the little thing, you know, the clothes and and all that uh, bathroom stuff and dishes and that, all that kind of stuff that we did bring with us. We're moving that out. And... Uh, yeah, we're just gonna be uh, we're gonna we're gonna live the homeless life for a little while. But we don't have to live the homeless life here on the Dune Steve anymore. We can just we've got the code to the garage door, and we can just come in the garage and uh, sit down. And uh, well, are we squatting right now, technically? Or I suppose, yeah. I, I, somebody could probably call the police on us, and and say, what hey, would happen? I don't know. They'd probably just tell us to get out. We just say, hey, this is going to be my, I don't know what they would do, to tell you the truth. I don't think that anyone would call the police because nobody's ever lived here, so nobody would care. I don't know. But if they did, it would probably only be the guy that actually is building it would care. You know what I mean? But he would care? No, he wouldn't. Okay. And I know that he's not around. 
But is this technically a breaking the law? I, I, I mean, let's say that he was an, an a-hole. <laughs> Are there some kind of charges that could be levied against you? Uh, I suppose, but I don't think that anyone would do that, even an a-hole. If they're trying to sell a house to somebody, they wouldn't charge them okay. for going into the house a week early and sitting around and talking. I know that they come in here and we, when we were first deciding on what house we wanted and stuff, he took us into several houses that were in various stages of construction that hadn't been occupied by uh, anybody yet and showed us those houses as examples of, you can have this design or this design. You know, we went to different ones. So you have seen a house identical to this one? Pretty much, yeah. I don't know if you would say it was identical, but it was close enough. Huh. Yeah, and that's uh, how we decided which one we wanted. Well, this is cool, and this is going to be your study. You were saying before we started recording what you were going to put in here, but recording-wise, is this a good environment? I don't know. Uh, it seems kind of echoey. I'm listening to it on headphones, and maybe people listening to this episode might think it's a little echoey. I don't know. I'm but sure. is that because the room is completely empty? Right. I was going to say, I'm sure once we put a few more things in, we put some bookshelves on the walls and put in a desk and put, I don't know, posters of Boba Fett and stuff up, that that will help to uh, dampen the sound some. I'm not going to be putting, like, microphone you know, the sound dampening foam or anything on the wall. <laughs> this is you had talked about that, though. I, t I, I may do. I, I've actually thought about doing something like that down in the basement, making kind of a recording tent kind of a thing. Like a, You've got a basement? Yeah. Below us? Mm-hmm. Oh, see, I didn't see any stairs or any... I can show you where it is after. Oh. There's nothing there. It's completely empty, and it's going to stay that way. We are not spending money to finish the basement this Again? time. Yes, it will not happen. I will put my foot down. My wife is already talking, oh, yeah, we could do this. We could do this down here and put this room. And I'm like, no, if we have money, then we're going to go on a friggin' vacation through Europe. We're not going to spend money making space in our house that we don't need. So, yeah, I, I will put my foot down. It will never be filled. But we could put... Like, I'm planning on putting my little weight bench down there and lifting weights down there because you don't need a fancy room for that. And uh, we'll see what else we do down there. But, yeah, I was thinking of putting together some kind of little recording tent kind of a thing that we can pull open and we could sit in there and it would give us really nice stuff. But I don't know if it matters. I mean, we don't worry so much about the sound quality, like the amazing sound. I mean, we got good enough sound quality. And, you know, we don't go uh, beyond that. We're not so worried about whether you can hear a little bit of background noise, like the guy mowing the lawn or whatever, a little bit of hiss or, you know, as long as it's not a problem, then who cares? Well, you usually try and clean it up before it goes out anyway, right? Yep. And that generally does the trick for me. I'm not too worried about it being, you know, I can hear a pin drop kind of a thing. I don't, I don't care. And I don't think listeners care either. You know, people are used to uh, that guy that uh, did that panel at NMX. The one that we regretted going to? The first of the two we regretted going to? Ah, uh, did we regret going to that one? I, the one that I regretted going to was the big finale. That one was a waste of time, although yeah, it was cool it was. to see Chris Hardwick. Chris Hardwick, yeah. He was fun. But, uh, yeah, the rest was goons. It was just corporate shills up there trying to be hip. But uh, anyways, yeah, the first one where he was saying that people are used to audio that's as bad as like what you hear on a phone, on a cell phone even, where like even words are garbled and crap. So if it's better than that, then they're happy. They're not going to be pissed off. You know, you can spend thousands and thousands of dollars to get yourself a studio as nice as a radio station would have, but... It's not going to make a big difference. What matters is your content. So, you know, the only he way we can really improve the show is, you know, getting rid of that one host that's uh, seriously dragging us down and getting, getting a new one to replace him. At one point he <laughs> said, nobody is ever going to listen to a podcast and say, oh, the content is pretty crappy, but I'm going to keep listening and see if it improves. 
Yeah, they don't but say they don't with say with the sound quality. They do say that if the content is good and the sound quality is not great, they'll, they'll they'll stick with it, hoping that the sound quality will get better. Right. Yeah, they don't listen to it and say, "Boy, this podcast is really boring and uninteresting," but their sound quality is so good. That's what he said. I'll okay. listen, but they do say, you know, it sounds kind of crappy, but boy, this show is fun. I'll listen to that. So you know, hopefully uh, we're fun. I don't know if we are or not. I'm sure everybody's uh, definition of fun is a little different. Well, once this is yours, and this is going to... You told me this is just your... your That's right. This study. Is my now, man can the kids hey. come in and ruin your computer as usual? Well, well unfortunately, they can because there's no door. It's just an open room. It's, it, it is the living room of the house. Now, we could just put a couple of chairs in here and coffee table and have it be one of the rooms that you never go into. Except for when company comes over and you sit in there and chat. And you have tea. Yes. Or we can make it a study. And since the family room is right next door, my wife's like, we don't need a living room because the living space is right next door. We can just do that there. So she's allowing me to well, did you jump occupy on it? this room. Because you said before you were showing me around and you said one of the reasons you chose this one because it is because it had five bedrooms and you have buttload of kids <laughs> um but was this little alcove or whatever something where you're like and this one i could have a study in or did that come later uh it came later but uh yeah both of the five be- bedroom models or designs or whatever that they had have this same downstairs floor plan the upstairs was a little different from one to the other but they both had the same downstairs and uh yeah so either way i would have got it which uh, is cool so I'm excited about that. Give me a prediction. Let's say that uh, two months from now everything is settled and you're in here permanently and you're used to it and everything is, is the way that it is. What do you see being the future of our shows? Once you have a place that's designated for this, what, how is how are things going to change? Well, it'll be nice because we won't have to be looking for a park that uh, it doesn't have fireworks going off in it. <laughs> fireworks or thunder? <laughs> Or screaming, banging Rain, children. Children uh, banging on the... And the motorcycle, uh, Evil Knievel's ghost was <laughs> haunting one of them. We won't have to... That, that'll be... We'll be back to normal. What I'm really hoping to be able to do is to be able to set up the equipment in here and leave it set up. So we can just walk in, sit down, turn it on, and go. That would be cool. I'm afraid that that may not be uh, in the cards just because I have a young child where you tell him no and he, he doesn't... It, that doesn't mean anything to him. He does it anyways. Maybe he does it because of that. <laughs> I don't know. Um, so we'll have to see. I, obviously, I don't want the equipment damaged because we didn't put it away. And that's why I've always put it away in the past. So, yeah, we'll have to see. But that's one thing that I really would like to be able to do. Um, and that would, I would assume, improve our speed, our ability to do stuff because we wouldn't have to spend 15 minutes setting it up and 15 minutes taking it down every week. Um, But yeah, having a place to go, I noticed when we, in my old house, we finished our basement and we moved the computer downstairs. I didn't go downstairs very often. And so I didn't get on the computer and I didn't take care of stuff that needed to be done for the Dune Steve. I would... Just not go down there and not do it. Whereas when I was in my bedroom before we finished the basement, I was in there all the time. And so I would always sit down and just look at what it was I needed to do and do it. And so I think it might help us perhaps get things done a little more often, you know, have a show on a little more often than once every two months. Uh, This has been our longest stretch, right? I think so. Um, Without an episode. Will The Calling have aired by the time the marathon happens? I think it's a, a good possibility. I'd re- I'm, I'm well, will, to... will the calling air before you go to Canada? Yeah, I want to try and finish it before I go to Canada. But So it's possible that the next time we get together, we'll be doing in the next episode here in this room, right? Right. And that episode is done. So Yeah, the story is ready to go. We're just waiting for the, the calling to be uh, finished because that's the next one. It's the last of the broken mirrors and uh, we would like to get it out there. Well, sort of the last of the Broken Mirrors. We do have a incentive episode, Broken Mirror episode. Oh, that's true. That, what? Uh, I'm going to take care of while I'm in Canada and make sure that 
Larby gets my notes finally. I've left him hanging for so long that he hopefully he still has files. <laughs> hopefully he doesn't have to go, oh, oh, yeah, well, I'll start back over on that from scratch. Because oh, that's geez. been deleted for six months. Mm-hmm. Um, that, that reminds me, uh, I went, I got really ambitious over the weekend or Thursday or something like that. And I edited for like four hours and I did the Lone Ranger episode and I did one of the marathon episodes and I did the calling and I was going to start on office visit, but I don't have that. Oh, okay. So if you can Dropbox I, that, that would be cool. I've got all of that. Sure. Tell oh, me more about of, Speaking of stuff that's six months old, seven months old now. Yeah. I was going to say, tell me more about him. Why did you get ambitious over the weekend? Does it have anything to do with uh, the, the topic that we were going to speak on? Or are we going to save that for next episode? Oh, well, we haven't decided how many. Sorry, I was laying down and getting back up, hence the grunt. We haven't decided how many episodes of the marathon would be. And I don't suppose it has to be a certain number. Yeah, I figured we just do as many as uh, we want, and then that's how many episodes it is. <laughs> yeah, I figured, though, you know, some could be short and some could be long, and we could just do a short one about that okay. after this. But uh, I just wanted to talk about your house and the new. The new beginning. I see. I'm not. I've I've moved into apartments before and stuff like that. And I've, I guess I've had new beginnings. It's mostly just the whatever the opposite of a new beginning is, where it's like, oh shoot, well that chapter of my life is over. But I mean, how exciting is it to have your very first brand new home that nobody else? Wait, the nobody else looked at that too, one. Yeah. Oh, well, never so it mind. doesn't count quite. But this is, you know, my wife keeps calling it our forever home. The fuck? This is the home that we we plan we can stay at forever and be happy kind of a thing. It's not one where you move into and you're like, oh, yeah, this is nice, but it doesn't have this and it doesn't have that. And we'd really like to have this. And so, you know, five years to, you know down the line, maybe we'll sell this one and go to a house that has all those things. See, this that's what our last house was. And this is the house where we made sure that it had all the things that we want. So we could be happy here forever if we... If we stayed. So it's it's pretty exciting to have that. And so, you know, the good thing about that is, you know, for the last year or more, we've been working to get our old house, you know, ready to sell and getting all this stuff done. And we don't have to hurry or rush or anything for any of that stuff. We can do this and that and the other thing nice and slowly and take care of it a little at a time. And I've told my wife, even just the moving in, you know, we are going to do it slowly. I don't care if we're just sleeping on mattresses on the floor for weeks. We are not going to turn our lives upside down and do everything, you know, work on it all day long and do nothing else and never go outside and never play with the kids and all that kind of stuff. You know, we're, we're going to do it slowly and take care of it in good time instead of in a rush. I'm pretty excited about it. It's got all the stuff we want, which is really cool. And you expect to grow old in this house? I don't think I'll ever, I don't think I'll live to be old. I'll probably be dead a couple years from now, come up the steps and have a massive coronary right on the front porch. And that'll be that. So I'll I'll probably die here. Okay. Well, good. It's good to have short-term and long-term goals. (laughs) Doesn't count as growing old here, but... Who knows? Yeah, I, I would be happy to grow old here. Still a long commute, though, unfortunately. That's the one drawback. How much longer would you say it is than the, your commute two months ago would would have been? When we lived in the other house? Yeah. Uh, 15 seconds. <laughs> <laughs> but the, uh, next time we come over, maybe we can walk around. the. We'll do a, our walk. Or, or yeah. Around. Yeah, we can do that. I haven't done that in a long time. The last time I was here, you had just put in, I don't know, like the walls, I guess. Yeah, it was still they, just a frame. Yeah, the, there were still the frames, and this will be a room, and this will be a room kind of thing. But I think it may have only had the first story and not the second story. I can't remember. No, we went upstairs, and you showed me where there was going to be double shower. Oh, yeah. That was pretty sweet, man. That was just an added bonus. That wasn't one of those things where we're like, oh, we have to have that in our new house. But we have it, and it was just a standard thing, so that's pretty awesome. I I can't even conceive of why you would need to double shower. (laughs) Because, I mean, it's not a sexy thing, 
to have a, it's like it's like a double bed is what it is. You know what I mean? It's like the Fred Flintstone and Wilma bed where you're just like, well, okay. So well, you're going to be showering separately, but you're at least near one. Yeah, I, see, the thing is, if you ever shower with a woman, you'll find that the temperature that they enjoy versus the temperature that you enjoy is vastly different. So either you get in and you fry your skin until it peels off and you just look like a friggin thanksgiving turkey or you don't want to get one at all because when you know women get their way well see it, it, for me i i can't connect showering to get ready for work or to get clean or whatever that's just like a solo activity yeah showering with a woman there's another agenda you there you know? go you know what i mean it's what not I'm talking about it's not you know i gotta clean my hair or all oh, my pits really stink or whatever <laughs> it is Th- that kind of shower you do by yourself so it's just it did, to me it seems like it defeats the purpose to have a huge let's not huddle together kind of <laughs> kind of shower but you know it shows what i know I, I it didn't occur to me that she would say i want it super hot and you're like i want it super cold and F you, I want a divorce. Yeah, I just... Uh, yeah, it was so close. We were almost divorced the last time we tried it. So, you know, it's just... I've l- lived at a house once that had double showers before. And I just took a shower with both shower heads on. That was kind of cool to have water coming from both sides. I don't know if it'll, you know, spray far enough. I haven't tried the ones up in here, really. See, there are people in third world countries right now listening to this on their iPods that just, they're disgusted. Yeah, they, they probably are. They're like, oh my gosh, we have no water. We, we can't, we have to hike for seven We have to weeks. boil our urine. And here yeah. these podcasters are. So, yeah, it, 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 I don't know. I mean, I obviously won't do that very often, but, you know. You never know. I mean, there could come a time where it's like, oh, crap, we need to be somewhere in 15 minutes, but we need a shower. Now we can't both have a, Now we can both have a shower. You know, we don't have to just like one of us goes grungy kind of a thing. I hear you, but that's why you have two bathrooms. True. For another but, house. but we have several children. Wait, uh, now you too. have in your bedroom, you have the double shower and then you have a bathtub with the shower. No, it doesn't have a shower. It's just a bathtub. All right. Well, see, do you not conceive of an, a day when you want a shower and she wants a bath? And it's just like, well, okay, we'll do it at the same time. Yeah, I suppose we could do that. I don't know. Because there is a bath separate from the shower, so it wouldn't be a problem at all. <laughs> Anyways, yeah, those are the uh, wonderful amenities that we will be having at this new place. So we're, uh, I'm excited about it. I think it'll be cool. We'll see how it goes. I guess we'll see if it improves the the podcast or uh, just takes away from it all further hopefully uh, it'll be an improvement I'll be able to sit in here and write hundreds of stories and share them with no one oh wait that's what you do I will sit in here and not write hundreds of stories but think about them and plan them out to the point where you would have already written them because that's generally what I do I get it all planned out and I tell you and you're like really you haven't written this yet because you know so much about this story <laughs> that I, if I knew that much about a story, it would be already done. Yeah, well, but it, there's no one right way to write. <laughs> well, all I know is, is, yes, your way is wrong. But there is no one right way to write. And uh, I imagine we'll talk more about writing again and podcasting again. So Yeah, perhaps soon. But for now, we're going to say goodbye and we'll talk to you again tomorrow when there's more of the worst marathon ever to be had. See you, folks. Bye. That Gets My Go is produced under a Creative Commons 3.0 license. This show is lame. As lame as Rich Outfield. Do you want to do the Kevin Smith one or do you want to talk about something? Yeah. I thought it would be cool to switch it up. And put maybe some of these in between the comic Well, yeah, I mean, we don't have to record them in that order, though. Okay. You can put them in whatever order you want. Oh, that would be cool if Kevin Smith inspired you. <laughs> I'd have to actually see Kevin Smith probably to get inspired by him. I'm sure you have. You've well, gone I've, to Comic-Con twice with me, I have and I seen go see him. Kevin every year. Yeah, I, I have seen him uh, both times. For I, He did Zack and Miri make, a, make uh-huh. a porno one year. And I think that may have been the first year, and the second year he may have just been there, or maybe he had something else, I don't remember.